After the successful static fire test of Ship 28, optimism was high for a swift achievement with its partner Booster 10. At this time, SpaceX and Elon Musk are getting more serious than ever about pushing the giant monster into orbit. They are also the lodestar in every SpaceX rocket development strategy, from the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy to the current Starship. There are things you can't find anywhere else than SpaceX. Commitment, persistence, and innovation. Actually, no one wants to mess with SpaceX. Join us as we examine the unraveling of the B-10 scrub leaving us questioning the future of space missions. Tune into this captivating expose, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more fascinating content. Find out everything about this in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. S After an excitement-filled orbital test flight November, SpaceX is in no mood to wait as it is already transporting its rockets to the launch site. Before SpaceX clears a Starship rocket for launch, it runs several tests. These involve evaluating its electrical systems, its fuel tanks, and its engines to ensure there are no surprises at the time of launch. The latest test for Ship 28 is the static fire test, with six bright Raptor engines igniting for a few seconds on the test stand. This test could provide us with valuable insights into the condition of this upcoming Starship prototype. Although Starship S-28 can generate thrusts of up to 1,380 tons when all six engines are fired, we can observe that the rocket and ground support equipment appear undamaged after the test. The test trials went well. Flight 3 Starship completed a full-duration static fire with all six of its Raptor engines. SpaceX said in a post on X, which also featured a video of the test. To be honest, SpaceX seems to be progressing quite swiftly with the preparation for IFT-3. With a successful static fire test of Ship 28, it's almost deemed safe and ready for action, waiting for the opportune moment to be paired with its booster. Additionally, the subsequent testing of Ship 28's payload bay yielded positive results, signifying its continued functionality following the rearish static fire trial. However, a notable point after this test was a few damaged tiles falling off the spacecraft, mainly in the areas of the flaps. Indeed, this is not overly concerning, especially considering the suffering of the TPS tiles on the spacecraft has been proven. It is likely that shockwaves bouncing off the ground cause those wing tiles to vibrate, and this may not occur when this spacecraft is stacked vertically. Certainly, there will be private inspections of the thermal protection system tiles on the wings in the coming days. Our prediction is that they'll accelerate their efforts more than ever. As lessons from the previous two launches seem to have propelled them forward significantly. I wonder if they're aiming for a launch at the end of January instead of mid-February, as most of us had speculated. Three days ago, SpaceX also successfully conducted the second stage spin test of Starship. This test checks the pump on the rockets to ensure that they can inject fuel and oxidizer into the engines during later tests and at the time of launch. Besides, SpaceX transported the Starship Super Heavy booster to the launch site. This is a positive development since it took the firm three months after the first test to roll out the booster to the site for the second test flight. Not to overly praise SpaceX, but it must be acknowledged that they're the only player capable of keeping up swiftly with the pace of time. However, disappointingly, things didn't unfold as expected. Anticipation peaked on Wednesday evening as BART departed for the launch site coinciding with the removal of scaffolding. Atop the OLM. These maneuvers signaled SpaceX's preparations for the imminent readiness of Booster 10. The series of events during Booster 10's test unfolded with a sequence of anticipations and setbacks. The orbital tank farm commenced operations marking the beginning of the process. Subsequently, the vending of OLM followed, fueling expectations as we observed the liquid stage from the OLM. This observation led to an anticipation of the imminent start of the liquid oxygen loading, potentially indicating preparations for a spin prime and an upcoming static fire. However, at a critical juncture, a significant vent disrupted the anticipated flow of events, hinting at a possible delay or a situation requiring further assessment, possibly signaling a hold scenario. The test concluded unexpectedly with an unusual detanking of Booster 10. Ordinarily, the standard procedure involves the drainage of liquid methane and a significant portion of liquid oxygen, with residual amounts returning to the storage tanks via gravity. Strangely, 
this time, all liquid oxygen appeared to drain out from the side of the launch mount diverging from the typical recovery process indicating an anomaly in the operation. Originally intended as a static fire test, B-10 encountered issues before completing the liquid oxygen loading process, prompting further investigation into the underlying cause of the deviation from the standard procedure. The recent scrub of the B-10 test presents a tapestry of potential causes. CSI Starbase SAC Golden brought attention to a significant overhaul on the liquid oxygen side infrastructure, encompassing pumps, subcoolers, valves, and plumbing. Although specific details remain undisclosed, SpaceX typically refrains from commenting on ground system issues during testing, leaving room for speculation. This recent upgrade underscores SpaceX's commitment to fortifying and enhancing propellant storage and distribution systems, critical components vital to fueling the expansive aspirations of the Starship missions. Furthermore, essential components such as the orbital launch mounts are undergoing meticulous inspections, refurbishments, and repairs in anticipation of the forthcoming flight test campaign. Another probable cause could be attributed to the behavior of the subcoolers, potentially resulting in solid ice remnants within the liquid oxygen lines. This anomaly might have impeded the flow rate, possibly due to cavitation, hindering the test's progress. Despite the intricate details surrounding the issue, it's affirmed that the complications did not originate from B-10 hardware. SpaceX's schedule indicates another attempt set for December 27th of this year, following within the time frame of 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, as per Cameron County's road closure. SpaceX's focused determination to swiftly progress aligns with their unwavering commitment to reaching the significant Starship Flight 3 milestone, pivotal for NASA's Artemis mission. The urgency displayed underscores SpaceX's dedication to meeting ambitious goals and contributing to the future of space exploration. Now to add to that list of rocket preparations, SpaceX has also built and tested a functioning prototype of the elevator Starship would use to lift and lower astronauts to and from the lunar surface. To make a comparison, let's talk about NASA's famous but costly rocket, the SLS. Since its first launch at the end of 2022, there seems to be little or no information about its return to testing until now. The primary pieces of information about this rocket were often headlined with titles like Unacceptable, Big Problem, Reduce Huge Cost, Lack of Transparency. A legendary competitor of SpaceX that we cannot overlook is Blue Origin. We won't delve into how the development of New Glenn has been lagging as it has become outdated compared to Starship by nearly a decade. What I want to talk about here is the optimal time for their most powerful rocket New Shepard. Despite being a key player and a money spinner for the company, Blue Origin has been unable to bring New Shepard back to the skies for over a year since its last malfunction. This highlights the robust development capability of SpaceX and how they bring a breath of fresh air with innovative technology approaches diverging from old and somewhat outdated methods of traditional organizations. Booster 10, preparing for its third test launch has been lifted onto the orbital launch mount by SpaceX using its gigantic robotic arms. These arms are designed to catch Starship in super-heavy mid-air with the intention of replacing the tall and cumbersome crane that would otherwise be needed to lift the stages. This not only saves time in future rocket launches as Elon Musk had promised, but also ensures a more efficient process. With its heat shield and all 33 Raptors installed, Booster 10's testing is expected to be condensed, possibly only including a cryoproof a 33-engine spin prime, and then a 33-engine static fire before being ready for flight. Notably, this particular prototype recently demonstrated a distinctive movement when its grid fins exhibited activity post-test following its counterpart's trial. Upon completion of these critical tests, the stage is set for the stacking of the Starship upper stage onto the booster, marking a pivotal milestone towards completing the launch vehicle. This process not only signifies the hardware readiness for integrated flight tests 3, but also shows the determination and precision in every preparation step for Starship, providing evidence of Elon Musk and SpaceX's serious commitment to turning humanity into a multi-planetary species in the not-too-distant future. All in all, it's bound to be an exhilarating week. It must be said that when it comes to SpaceX's capabilities, there's no need for debate. Even then, they can easily conduct four to five launches in 2024. However, the path of SpaceX often involves not only themselves, but also indispensable with key U.S. government agencies. Even with favorable testing outcomes, SpaceX might encounter a delay in acquiring a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. 
the FAA, in the wake of Flight 2's incident, is conducting an inquiry and will withhold the license until SpaceX completes the investigation and confirms any necessary corrective measures by SpaceX. Furthermore, SpaceX is facing more scrutiny from environmental groups that are concerned about harm to critical habitats near rocket launches. Several environmental groups announced December 15, a new complaint about the environmental impacts of SpaceX's Starship launches from Starbase, the company's facility in far southern Texas. In the complaint, the group alleges the FAA failed to properly review the environmental impacts of the first Starship launch before issuing a revised license for the second launch that took place November 18. This revised licensing process involved an environmental assessment by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, FWS, concerning a pad deluge system. This system, installed by SpaceX to avert damages akin to those suffered during the inaugural launch, was deemed by the FWS as having negligible environmental impact. However, these environmental factions contest that both the FAA and Fish and Wildlife failed in their obligations under the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, to thoroughly evaluate the environmental consequences of Starship launches. They argue that the FAA overlooked the impacts of the Starship Super Heavy launch program by neglecting a supplementary NEPA analysis. Moreover, they assert that the FWS also fell short in its evaluation, focusing solely on the deluge system and neglecting the environmental repercussions of debris falling from the April launch. Despite the apparent success of the deluge system in preventing further pad damage, the environmental groups contend that this does not absolve the oversight in assessing broader environmental applications. Failing to do an in-depth environmental review and letting SpaceX keep launching the world's largest rockets that repeatedly explode shows a shocking disregard for wildlife and communities. Jared Margolis, a senior attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity, said in a statement about the new complaint, SpaceX should not be given free reign to use this amazing area as a sacrifice zone. Although environmental groups criticize the government for not doing enough to protect the environment from Starship launches, the hope of the third flight in the first quarter of 2023 shows no signs of diminishing, because what SpaceX is trading off for is extremely valuable. In a December 12 presentation to a local group in Brownsville, Kathy Luters, former NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations and current General Manager of Starbase for SpaceX, said she expected the next Starship launch to occur early in 2024. It would be great if we were in the first quarter definitely, she said, according to a report. Elon obviously would probably say the end of December, but I don't think we'll get there. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.